Welcome back. Time for our interview. Baba Nomamba, who is the Labour Party leader, Budalangi <coughs> MP, and former ODM Secretary General, uh, joins us now. Good evening. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Anne. Thank you for coming in. Yes. Uh, let's start with the, the politics uh, of, of the region you represent, and uh, why do you think it is that you're going to deny uh, NASA leader, uh, ODM leader, Raila Odinga votes in Busia? And this is not about uh, denying Raila Odinga or denying anybody votes. You, you've said this, under this, your watch you're not giving a, any votes there. Th this is about exercising one's democratic right. And remember the constitution guarantees the freedom of association, the freedom of political choice. So this is political choice and it's competition. Mm -hmm. And that is what democracy is about. And so this is a competition. We've made a choice and we believe that uh, we have an agenda that we are going to sell to the people. We believe they'll listen to it. What in your agenda do you think would sell more than the NASA message? What is the NASA message? What's the NASA message? Various things. They're going to fight corruption. <laughs> they're going to bring equitable development across the country. Haven't you, haven't you heard that before? And let, me, let, me, let me first of all perhaps um, just say that um, for me this is not about fighting an individual or uh, denying an individual um, uh, uh, votes. This is, this is about being part of a new narrative just changing the narrative of politics of, uh, uh, of, uh, of this region and uh, um, telling the people that we can play progressive politics, we can play politics that is not just talk, 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 we can play politics that does not balkanize a region and, and say this is a region that is exclusive to so and so. And, and above all, yeah, there has been this tendency I in Western Kenya where any time you support Raila Odinga, then you are a saint. But the moment you disagree with him, then you are a devil. You go back to him again, all your sins are forgiven. And you can see this and with uh, basically all the major political players in, in that region. L let me give you a simple example. Let me take Musali Abdawadi. You think they're psychophants? No, no, I'm not saying they're psychophants. I'm just saying that there's a narrative that needs to be challenged. Uh, and and, and what is that narrative? Uh, uh, this is what I'm explaining. Mm -hmm. Let me use Musalem Davadi to explain this narrative. In 2002, Musalem Davadi is the running mate of Uhuru Kenyatta, the Uhuru Musalia ticket which lost the election. At that time, the propaganda machinery was to paint Musalem Davadi as the architect of the Golden Bug scandal. And that went on and on and on. And we have even seen recordings of Raila Odinga himself going public and, and, and questioning the integrity of Musalia. Fast forward, 2007. Salem David is now the running mate of Raila Odinga. All the supposed sins are forgiven. He is now a hero. Move forward five years again, 2013. Salem David is now running for president. He is painted black again. And, all, and, and named all sorts of names. Oh, he's been bought. Oh, he's been compromised. Fast forward, 2017. Salem David is back in the Raila fold. Yes. No, no, no. I, I, no, no, no. We, we, we have to move along. So yes. you're saying you're being demonized unjustly. No, no, no. I'm saying is that this narrative has to change. But you sure you're being demonized ever since you left ODM? I don't are you, care, are really. You? I don't care. What don't I, care. I, I don't care, really. I don't care because what I care about is my conscience. What I care about is uh, the vision I bear and my belief that in the fullness of time, you can lie to some people sometime, but you cannot lie to all the people all the time. And I do believe that ultimately this region shall challenge this narrative of profiling people, of demonizing people, and ultimately people will exercise their right to decide. But uh, Raila Odinga, the NASA leader, is somebody who you swore allegiance to. He's somebody who... Uh some would say raised you politically, gave you the position, the clout, the, the training, no, and no, you no, turned no, your no, back no, no, on no, 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 him. No, no, just stop there. Nobody has ever given me anything. Yes, Raila Odinga is some kind of a mentor. And I have the utmost respect for him. I will always respect him. He's a father figure. And he's played a role in my, uh, in my political evolution. But to say that he has made me, no. I didn't say he made you. He I, did said not he, make I said he'd really To say that he has given me anything, no. For instance, to become Secretary General, I had to battle the men in black. I had to battle all sorts of, 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 of searing propaganda. I had to work my way to any position. And, and by the way, 
politics is a game of uh, shared vision, shared ideals. As long as you have something you share with somebody, you can belong to the same political fold together. But when you reach a point when you realize that you no longer share anything, all the ideals you believed you shared no longer hold, then that is why today um, the party. Today uh, you will see two politicians who have been closely working together, not working together. And I gave you a good example of Musadia. Yeah. 2007, they are together with, with, with Raila. Five years later, they Let's talk about your own track together. record. Because yes. at one point, um, it was, without question, your political star was rising. You were the only MP who, after the bungle 2007 elections, swore by Raila Odinga's name. Um, then you recorded him without his knowledge. And now here you are. A new man in a green tie endorsing President Uhuru Kenyatta's candidature. Some say these are chameleon-like tendencies, perhaps even some kind of betrayal seed in you. How do you respond to them? How about um, taking a look at the reality of Kenyan politics? Raila himself disagreed with Moy, worked with Moy, even became Secretary General of Kano, appointed to cabinet by Moy, worked with Kibaki disagreed with Kibaki, holding different political opinions at different times in history is normal. It's the most normal thing. 2007, Raila and Kalonzo disagreed badly and fell out badly. I remember the Raila crowd even nicknaming Kalonzo Watermelon and calling him all sorts of things. Today, they're both bodies. It's a normal thing. Yesterday, Murama betrayal and Kalonzo, part of politics is what you're it's saying. not betrayal, it's just that you reach a point when the place of a particular person in the story of your political journey ends and you open a new chapter. I have moved along with uh, the Raila team for a while, for about 10 or so years. We shared certain ideals. I reached a point when I realized that we just do not share those ideals. For instance, uh -huh. when the main in black happened in Kasarani, I just realized that this whole talk about a democracy, about freedom, about respect for the popular will of the people, was more hot air than substance. When I eventually took over the position of Secretary General and attempted to bring about changes that would have avoided the mess we have witnessed in the nominations. I even fired the National Elections Board mm -hmm. in a bid to clean up the whole mechanics of internal elections. Roadblocks are planted all over in my path. And then I realized there is more talk here than substance and that uh, people talk the talk but they will never be ready to walk the walk. Let me go back to Budalangi briefly because that is really the constituency I represent. For a long time, my people have suffered greatly from water, from flooding, and among the things that have affected us the most is uh, the geographical feature that is uh, Rivanzoia. For a long time, the people have needed a bridge, a simple infrastructural project in that place. Many years, many people came there and promised this bridge. Kibaki was there. Raila was as Prime Minister, as Minister of Infrastructure. When three years ago he had an accident, Uhuru Kenyatta came there. He listened to the people. They placed a memorandum before him and they told him, Mr. President, our priority from national government is this bridge. Okay. Today on, the bridge is being complete. Is this bridge, because you all often cite it, you know, when you're talking about what the president has done for you, is this one bridge the only reason why you are supporting President Kenyatta? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. The bridge is a symbol of a commitment to go the extra mile to listen to the people and truly do something to transform their lives. What is politics about? What is leadership about? Why do we seek to occupy positions of leadership? Is to it transformed the fortunes of our people is to improve the state of our land and if a simple thing like a bridge if I may ask could not be done previously by previous presidents previous prime ministers previous ministers for finance previous uh, ministers for infrastructure the fact that it took a president to come after a bold tragedy listen to the people 
and do something about it. For me, that is a mark of performance. Okay. Uh, you talked about, um, you, you, you were, you know, in the past, uh, seemed to talk a lot about um, the concept of uh, Luya um, consciousness, awaking the Luya consciousness, if, if I may phrase it that way. Um, where do you think this state of consciousness is now um, with some 70 or so days to the general election? Consciousness for me is merely a people taking time to reflect on where they are and making a decision of whether they want to continue to occupy the position they occupy or whether they want to go a different route. Mm -hmm. In my view, that conversation of consciousness is very much on. And even just sitting here to talk about this narrative, the narrative that has attempted to pigeonhole leaders from the Luya community. In fact, the Luya community has been put in a scenario where if you support Raila Odinga, you are a hero. So Ababu Namamba supporting Raila Odinga is a general. If you disagree with Raila Odinga, you become a loser. You become, in fact, you become a devil. If tomorrow I were to announce an that I have made an about turn and I will now back Raila Odinga for president. All my supposed sins would be forgiven. All of a sudden, I'm challenging that notion and I'm saying that you But is it just not about loyalty? It's about, you know, um, you know, you may have differences with the party um, that you are in, but you work from within the party to resolve those issues. If you had grave differences within ODM, that really the sign of your commitment would be to stick in the party and sort it out from within. I mean, no political outfit is perfect. So why is Kalonzo Musioka not in ODM? Why did he leave ODM in 2007? Why is Msalim David not in ODM? Why did he leave ODM in 2011? Why is uh, William Ruto not in ODM? Why did he leave ODM in 2011? Why have all these people left ODM? Does it mean that those who leave ODM are wrong? and the one man who remains is right? Uh -huh. Is that the narrative you're, you, you are, I mean, is that the narrative that you want us to, to acknowledge as the truism of the politics of this country? No, I'm just that asking any a question. Time, what, 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 by, by the way, for me, as far as ODM is concerned, ODM for me is the past. I moved on and I left ODM behind. Uh -huh. I am now the leader of Labour Party. Proudly so. I'm very happy in Labour Party. I'm building my party, the party of uh, Lime Green. Mm -hmm. We are moving from strength to strength. We have made a conscious decision as a party. It is not the, the decision of just Ababu Namamba. It is the decision of all the organs of the party to support the re-election of President Uhuru Kenyatta. And we have bazillion reasons. Bazillion. Bazillion reasons. Okay. If we had uh, more time here, I would give you, give you a trial time that would give okay. you bazillion reasons. Okay, we have we bazillion questions. <laughs> um, let's just take in some of them um, from you. Yeah. And thank you, by the way, very much for sending them in. And we'll get him to respond to it before we join Ayub Sabula very shortly. Can Ababu Namwamba clear allegations of bribery from Jubilee? What's the visibility of his party? So two, two in one. Let's start mm -hmm. with bribery allegations. Let's, let's just hold on and let him respond to that. Were you, w w was there some sort of monetary influence that got you to support? Th that's the same the narrative. That's the same narrative that was used against uh, Musalim Dabad when he left Raila in 2011. And it was alleged that Kibaki had paid Musalim Dabad 5 billion shillings. It was alleged that uh, somebody had formed UDF, Taylor made it for, for, for Musalim Dabad. And that's the narrative we are challenging. Mm -hmm. It can't be that when Raila joins Moy, or when Raila says Kibaki Tosha, then that is heroic. But when a son or daughter of Mulembe decides to chart their own political course, they have been bought, they have been compromised. It is hogwash. Okay. It's absolute hogwash, okay. and it's a narrative that we shall challenge, and I'm going to take on this narrative head on. Okay, let's take the second part of, of that question, if you could bring it up again, um, just for us to see it. What's the visibility of, of your party, Labour Party? My party is very visible. My party is all over the place. We, we, we just did an, our NDC the other day. It was a culmination of a long period of uh, rebranding that we've been doing for the last 10 months. Uh, uh, preparing our candidates and we are actually happy that our party is an active player in this election. But you know if that visibility question is part of a larger question which is you you seem to have fallen away from the spotlight. Your stars dimmed a little bit, not as visible. 
had we not called you here for this interview we don't know when next we'd have heard of a babu for, me, for me to come here just came from the ntv okay I've so been, you're all uh, over I've the been, place uh, i've been all over the place i've been uh, as far as media presence you don't have to be making noise and yapping all over in every media house for you to, to have substance and by the way when you talk about media presence and it also matters what you're saying it matters what substance you are you are you're conveying you're propagating to the people i am very happy where i am i am playing politics of substance and those politics of noise politics of false hope mm. politics of propaganda politics of perpetual fault finding right I, I, in fact and there is absolutely no honor in perpetual fault finding okay fine fair yes. enough we want to get some more questions so uh, very quickly let's take uh, one more i think has a babu Hi Ababu, do you think you can win without Raila? Anyway, I liked your move to be a man politician of your own kudos. You know, mm -hmm. I can tell you Anne that among the things I enjoy most in life is busting myths. Busting myths. Mm. I can't wait for August 8th. Because there is a myth we want, particularly myself. Mm. One of the reasons why I even decided to run for Budalanya not to change and run for any other position. We want to bury a myth. That you can keep that seat without trial or dingus help. No, that mm. politics in this country, that mm. Budalanya is not anybody's colony. Western Kenya is not anybody's colony. This is a free area with the free people, with the full rights, constitutionally so, to determine our own political journey so and I am you? so confident uh, and uh, as I sit here with you uh, I'm so confident that because of the work I have done and uh, 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 the vision I bear the people of Buddha line will re-elect me with, with a resounding, uh, resounding majority I have no doubt about it and we'll wait and see we're yes. taking a short break we're going to cross over to the other side of the studio where Ayub Savula um, is uh, waiting on us of course uh, he's a Lugari member of parliament we're going to be talking about the larger politics of the western region stay with us